This is The Real Hustle, New Recruits. The Hustlers are back, and this time they've brought in two new faces to help them with their scams. New Recruits Polly and Jazz. Join original Hustlers Paul, Jess and Alex. Working together as a team, they'll carry out scams that are more cunning and devious than ever before. On tonight's show, this lady has misplaced her TV. Can't believe we're so stupid, actually. Paul meets his match. Okay, take that and snap it off so you've got a tiny, tiny little bit of wood left like that. And Sarah Jane Dunn is worried about Alex's health. Have we got a doctor? No, I don't need a doctor. Don't we Would you bet me with? <laughs> He's got a heart um... The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to help them with their scams. They'll be thrown in at the deep end. No training and no practice, just straight in. Today's celebrity guest hustler is a British actress best known for her starring role in Hollyoaks Sarah Jane Dunn. I don't have any strategy as such yet to get through today because I don't know what my hustle's going to be. I've just got a million different things running through my head, a million different possibilities of what I might be doing. I think the skills that I've got that might help me today are the fact that I'm an actress, obviously, so I'm, I'm used to playing a different role. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get into some kind of character. Hopefully that will help me. I'm a little bit anxious, a little bit apprehensive, but I'm um, really excited to know what I'm going to be doing. Sarah has been told to go to the foyer of an upmarket business hotel. And right on cue, here's someone to give her the hustle briefing. Hi. Hello. You ready to uh, get your scam on? I think so. You want to know a little bit about it? Yes, I'd love to. So you know that uh, sometimes we sell people things that aren't real. That's an easy scam. But some people are wise to that, so what we do is we sell them something that's absolutely genuine, worth a great deal of money, but we sell it to them for a much cheaper price. Okay. But how do you get away with the money and the goods? No idea. Is that impossible? We're going to find out. Exciting. Why don't you meet the gang? Perfect. See what happens. Let's go. We'll go that way. Sarah's going to have to hold her nerve in the choke. This hotel is right next to Heathrow Airport and is full of people having business meetings and preparing to fly off to foreign shores. Both are likely to be carrying sums of money on them, making them very attractive to hustlers. This lady takes a seat near the hotel bar, unaware she's about to become today's mark. She barely has time to settle in with her friend before some more hotel guests make their entrance. It's Alex and Sarah, posing as business travellers. But their luggage is a little unusual. Judging by the metal briefcase strapped to Alex's wrist, he's carrying more than his passport and something to read for the trip. As they carry their drinks towards some empty seating, it's down to Sarah to cause a bit of a scene. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh, she spilled everything. Sorry, sorry. She spilled their sparkling water all over the sofa. Oh, thank you. Where will they sit now? The little accident was an excuse for them to be able to sit right next to the Mark and her friend. Excuse me. Sorry, do you mind if we just sit here while he cleans up my mess? Sorry. Managed to throw everything on the floor. Sorry. All over my boots. Just need to check. Alex is making sure the ladies notice the briefcase and the handcuff. I'll never be too sure of this. Why do I look like a criminal? 
Don't say that. Well. Criminal, <laughs> as if. Uh, this is uh, this is me. I, I do. Um, we sell watches. Um, so you have Tag Heuer. They're be They are beautiful. Oh, you like that? Gorgeous watches. This is the most um, popular model at the moment. And we're selling quite a lot of these. That's like my favourite one. That's your favourite one. Not that. This is a, a Breitling. Alex lets the mark take a closer look at the goods. They are very popular, Isn't it? though, those at the moment. But it's, it's one of our... Well, you can have it as a, demand for as a necklace. They're certainly nice watches. That's because they're worth a lot of money. So that's 2145 But that's, um, that's not cost price. That's retail. That's retail. Close that before people get, get some interesting ideas. The paraphernalia. It looks a little, <laughs> looks a little bit dramatic, scary, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. They all seem to be getting on very well. Time for Jess yeah, to cause a bit sorry. of an interruption. Right. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh, Mrs. Yeah. Hello, um, I've just a message for you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Marks has missed his flight from Paris and he won't be able to get here, I'm afraid. Okay, oh, thank you. Sorry, thank sorry you. about that. That's not good. Um, Hands on flight. That's six. He's missed it completely. He's missed it completely. Sounds like an important business meeting has been cancelled, and Alex doesn't look too happy about it. What are we going to do well, with him? We... we can't take him with us. We'll have to pay import duty on these. The cancelled meeting clearly had something to do with all those watches. What time? Have we got there? enough time to go into town? No. No. Not at all. We're pushing it anyway. No. We're just going to have to try and find somebody to approach. Couldn't interest you in a watch. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. He explains his predicament. We've got a bit of a strange situation because basically we have a dealer who is going to come here and uh, buy these. They've, he's agreed to pay four grand for them, but he's not coming. Um, we're going to Los Angeles at uh, what time? Six o'clock. Six, yeah. And I can't take these with me because the price of import duty to Los Angeles would just be phenomenal. So I just want to get rid of them for cost price. Cost price for me is £1,500. The whole thing retail would give you about £5,500, 5500 5, maybe £6,000. 6000 I'd say, yeah. If you're interested at all, we could do a deal. You could take the watches and sell them and make a big profit. So he's offering the mark three luxury watches for the wholesale price of just £1,500. Where would we sell those? To sell on, yeah. Uh, things, for things like this, you could go to any jeweller. Yeah, we'd have to. We've not got an option, have we? Yeah, if you want to do that. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you which ones you have? The Mark wants to know exactly how much the timepieces are worth. The tag is called the Tag Carrera, if you wanted to look that up. Uh, that should be about 2,100 on retail. She looks the watches up online. Sure enough, they seem to check out. Into a shop. But even that amazing bargain on offer isn't good enough for this lady. I'll do a grand. It, it would have to be 1500 because then I, I would feel fair. She's playing hardball. That's the bargain of the century. Where's 1500 like Yeah, well, 1500 I like... is the bargain of a century. I, I like them too, but that's 1500 is a bargain yeah, of the that's century. Yeah, it's Oh, my good Lord. <laughs> Do you have it cash? cash? Okay. Do you have to go and get it or do you have it here? Fine. Deal done then. Alex decides to let her have them for the knockdown price of £1,100. This must really be her lucky day. And there's the cash. The mark hands over £1,100 to two people she's only just met. But here's the thing. Those watches really are worth £6,000 in the shops. Who's hustling who here? All that's left is to hand over the watches. But here comes Jess to throw a spanner in the works. Mr. Steele, sorry, there's been a bit of confusion at the other end. Mr. Marks jumped on another flight. He's going to be in about five minutes. Really sorry. What? He's jumped on another flight. He'll be here in about five minutes. There's been, some was... there's been some confusion at the other end. His PA's just called now. He did jump on a flight and he's on his way now. And he said he'll meet you up in your usual suite. So the business meeting is back on. Mr. Marks, the original buyer, will be here shortly. And he'll want those watches. Alex pays for all their drinks, but unfortunately for the Mark, the amazing deal is off. Right, well, I think you might have your money back. 
Oh, you can't, no, you can't do I that. This just... Sarah's job is to side with the mark and make Alex keep his word. You can't do that. Yeah, but that, this be. gentleman's going to pay me £4,000 for these watches. Oh, these late... Send him my way. He's not going to deal with you, because he's my client. But I will do the deal with him, and you get your profit. No, you can't do that. Okay. Wanting to do the right thing, Alex offers to sell the watches to Mr Marks for her and let her have the profits. No, take your money back for the watches, will not it? You don't want to have, you don't want to make any money. She wants out altogether. Because you could just go for the money. And no, no, you, like, you stay with me. Yeah, you come with me. You come with no, us. No, 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 no. I'm not going to run not, off. Yeah. He's coming here. We come together. I will sell them on your behalf, and you will make two thousand four hundred pounds profit. We're going to go upstairs, sit there, and Mr. Mark should be here in the next two minutes. Do you want to come up? The Mark has agreed to let Alex sell on the watches, promising her a healthy profit. But she's still suspicious about what's going on. And so she should be, because it's all about to go horribly wrong. Are you OK? We didn't see if she's getting up left arm. When hustlers go out, they don't bring money. They bring prop bets. The proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. When was the last time you bought a guy a drink? Never. OK, this will be the first time. This will be the first time. <laughs> Have you ever bought a guy a drink? You've never bought a guy a drink in your whole life? Tonight, either I'm going to buy you all drinks, or you all have to buy me a drink. Fair enough? Yeah. OK. Got a little challenge, OK? It uses three matches, OK? Take that and snap it off so you've got a tiny, tiny little bit of wood left. Just about that. There's one, there's two, and uh, one more. OK? So we have to make them float in the bottle at this level here, more or less. First of all, I want to mark the level so we know exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so, uh, Right about there, would you say that's about right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Of course, if we just drop them in, they'll float at that level. So to make it even more difficult, we'll top it up. As you can see, this is going to make things a little bit more difficult. But there are a couple of rules. First of all, you can't lift the bottle off the table. And you can't tilt it, and you can't remove any water at all. So, to win a drink, Paul's friends need to make three broken match heads float level with the line on the bottle either all together or one at a time. But they can't remove any water or tilt the bottle. I was going to cover the top and then, like, put it to the side. Would that not work? Mm, not really, because then they'd be floating at this level. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You couldn't, like, put your hand over it and then tilt, turn it? No, then it wouldn't be upright no, and you'd probably spill some. It's going to be so easy when we find out the answer. <laughs> I just don't see any possible way of doing that without taking the water out. And you're not allowed to tip the bottle. Nope. OK, let's see you do it then. Ready? Yep. The press. Oh no. Oh, no. There they all go. Now there's one at that level. Wow. There's two at that level. Yeah. And there's three um. at that level. Paul filled the bottle right up to the very top. He then pushed down on the liquid using the palm of his hand. This changed the water pressure, allowing him to make the matchsticks float at any height in the bottle. Each one required a slightly different pressure to hit the winning line. So, that'll be uh, three martinis. <laughs> uh, the bar's over there. Cool, let's do it. That was three martinis, one each. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> A weekday morning, a shopping precinct on a local high street. 
and a couple of shoppers doing what shoppers do, shopping. This is the Shop Lift. 20 minutes later, the shoppers exit, having made a purchase. And that's why this lady has just become the mark. She doesn't get far before she and her husband are stopped by a man in a fluorescent jacket. I think I have them here. Is it a Toshiba? Yeah, excuse me, sorry. Did you just buy that from Taylor's? Yeah. They just asked me to stop you. I think there's a problem with the TV. Of course. And here comes a sales assistant to sort out the confusion. Sorry, sorry. We're giving you the wrong one, that's a refurb. Sorry, you could put that down, this has just been... Sounds like there's been a mistake in the shop. They've been given the wrong box. Um, there's a guy coming to pick this up, that's a refurb you for a hotel. No, no, just, he's just gonna come and prick it up. But is it your delivery van? Yeah, 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 he's okay. coming. It's, it's right. the white van that usually comes here. I, I can only I'll, wait for two minutes, is that okay? I'll uh, come into the shop and I'll give you, I'll give you the, the, the one that you're meant to have. Sorry about that. The security guard is willing to watch the box for a short while. That's going to be picked up. That belongs to someone else. It's a refurb anyway, so we sh you know, you need to have a brand new one. The Mark is happy with the official taking charge of the TV and heads back into the shop with the assistant. We fixed up the box. That's why I had to rush and get you. If you just go upstairs and wait for me by the couch area, I'll be with you in one sec. Oh, I've got to give him the invoice. I'll be with you one second. Can't forget the paperwork. The couple head up to the television department of the shop and are soon noticed by the employee that sold them the TV. Back in again. Uh, yeah, we've got a refurb TV. The guys are supposed to wait, so we're waiting for the telly. Yes. It's, a, it's, a, it's a brand new box telly. Just come from, it just came from our warehouse, which is around the corner. We don't know. There's don't, a guy in here with glasses. We don't have anyone with glasses. There's no employee matching that description. There's a guy down here with glasses and he just folded us and folded you. Are you the guys at work here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Now, seriously concerned, the Mark heads back downstairs to find the man with the glasses. Unfortunately, he's nowhere to be seen. Nor is there brand new flat screen TV. So how did the hustlers convince the Mark to hand over her newly bought goods to complete strangers on the pavement? The hustlers were in position and on the lookout long before the mark arrived. Paul was outside looking for customers entering the electrical store. And Alex was already waiting inside. To the genuine shop staff, he looked like a customer. Uh, no, just having a look around, thank you. But when the mark walked in, he made sure to fiddle with some price labels, establishing himself as someone that worked there. Having observed the direction the couple arrived from, Paul positioned himself in their path, ready to intercept. Uh, excuse me, sorry, did you just buy that from Taylor's? Yeah. And they just asked me to sorry. stop you, I think there's a problem with your TV. Sorry, you could put that down. I'm so sorry, that's uh, my fault. I was meant to bring out the other one. And once the mark had been separated from the box... Yeah, purely my fault. Paul loaded it into the waiting hustle van. If you just go upstairs and wait for me by the couch area, I'll be with you in one sec. Oh, I've got to give him the invoice. I'll be with you one second. Then Alex hopped aboard, and before the market even realised anything was wrong, they were gone. I was going to wait with the guy, but he wanted both of us to come back. I can't believe we're so stupid, actually. And he walked us back into the shop and said, wait there, the television, we, did, we just thought he worked in the shop and that we'd picked up the wrong television. We assumed he worked in the shop as well because he was in the shop when we bought the TV. And, and now we realise that they've gone with the TV. This scam is so convincing because the mark is faced with two figures of authority, a security guard and a shop employee. The natural reaction is to assume that they're both legit and do as they ask. Never allow yourself to be separated from your possessions, even something that you've just bought. If there's a problem, take it back to the shop yourself and sort things out, even if it's really heavy. Earlier today, actress Sarah Jane Dunn helped rope in a mark in a hotel lobby. Excuse me. Sorry, do you mind if we just 
sit here while he cleans up my mess. Together with Alex, she persuaded her to help them out by buying expensive watches at a fraction of the real cost. 1500 is the bargain of a century. <laughs> but now, Alex's original business partner is turning up, expecting to pick up all the timepieces. Mr. Marks jumped on another fight, it's going to be in about five minutes. I will sell them on your behalf and you will make £2,400 profit. The Markers agreed to let Alex sell on the watches, promising her a healthy profit. In The Choke, part two. Alex and Sarah take the ladies upstairs to a conference room in the same hotel. Have a seat. So you're, you're... They prepare themselves for the arrival of Mr. Marks, the business contact. He's a very fussy client, so Alex gives the ladies an excuse to be in the room for the deal. Would you mind if I tell them that you're friends of Uma's mother? That gives us a good excuse of why there's two strangers in the room. So that's so at least he doesn't start sort of asking questions and being. Alex lets the Marks see that the genuine, expensive watches are still in the briefcase. Of course they are. They've been chained to his wrist from the moment he entered the hotel. Oh, do you mind giving me a little bit of water? Yeah, yeah. All the excitement seems to be taking its toll on Alex. He's looking a little under the weather. Uh, you shouldn't be. Hopefully that glass of water will perk him up, because here comes his client, Mr. Rob Marks, also known as Hustler Paul. Hi. Hello. Always with the left with oh, us. Oh, yeah, um, I've got you all. These are some uh, friends of Uma's parents. Random you don't mind, do you? We're, oh, we're just here now. We're here now. Yeah. Okay. Right now, Alex has the watches and the Mark's money, and she's keeping a very close eye on him. <clears throat> okay. Perfect. Did you win? Oh, no. Again, Alex looks unwell. It must be too hot in the room. I'm just going to sit down, actually. Have you, do, do you want some? You've got your water. You're yeah. right. Somehow I feel a bit lightheaded. Paul checks over the watches, making sure they're up to his high standards. Can you tell the ladies that the Breitling retails at around three and a half? Well, my shop retails about four. Well, yeah, but well, that's your shop. That's... Hi. Hey. Hello. Oh. Jess arrives with more refreshments. You OK? You don't have a doctor, a do you? Well. But Sarah is getting increasingly concerned about Alex's health. Got a we've got, we haven't got a doctor. Well, I've got a paramedic. Yeah. Which you've been no, I don't need a doctor. Don't be silly. Fine. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Send a paramedic. Yeah. Would you mind? Is that no, all right? No, just, no. just to check because we're yeah, yeah. on flight. Just to check. No worries. Jess goes off to get a medic who happens to be in the hotel. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. All right. These are fine. Yeah. Yep. But this doesn't stop the business deal going ahead. Paul hands over £4,000 in cash for the watches, currently owned by the Mark. So he said four? Yep. Four. Need that. four. OK. Um, Good. Now, just to unlock the handcuffs and hand Paul the briefcase. But Alex is so unwell, he's struggling to find the key. Are you have, I given you, have I given you the keys? No, I've not. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? And then, disaster. Put this, uh, put <laughs> Alex collapses to the floor. Okay, okay. It's right. Open we up. Do. See, she's getting the paramedic. Get. <laughs> Sarah is beside herself with worry, and it's all happening right at the Mark's feet. <laughs> he's going, he's going. Alex must be having some kind of seizure. He's even foaming at the mouth. She's, she's bringing someone now. At last, here comes the medic. <gasps> oh, so he's just collapsed. Right, OK, can everyone move out the way, please? What's happened to him? She looks an awful lot like new hustler Polly. Ian, can you hear me? Ian, can you hear me? She can't find a pulse. She's going to have to get out a defibrillator and restart his heart. Oh, what's this? What's this? Right, have you got the keys? Can you undo that, please? But there's a problem. Who's got the key? She can't give Alex a shock if he's got a metal box chained to his wrist. What they need right now is the key to the handcuff. There was a key handed about ten minutes ago down at reception. Who's going to get the key? Do you know what the key looked like? Do you know what the key looked like? Sarah's too busy looking after her husband. The only other person who's seen the key is the Mark. 
Do you know what the key looks like? Yeah, we need to get the key. Right, we need to get this off him now. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. We just need to get the key. The Mark and her friend are shell shocked, but do as they're told and go to reception to get the key. But no key has been handed in here. Moments later, by the time they get back upstairs, it's too late. They're gone. Oh, for God's sake. There's your purse there. The paramedic, the businessman, and the friendly couple they met in the lobby are gone along with the Mark's money and those expensive watches. Oh, yeah, but you did have the fact. He's getting on a flight to LA. Yeah. Um, we're going to Los Angeles at six o'clock. Of course, those airline tickets were as phony as the whole setup. They were actually knocked up by new hustler Jazz on a computer. And that foam coming from Alex's mouth should actually have perked him up a bit. It was produced by an antacid tablet, slipped into his mouth by Sarah. It's all right, he'll be fine, he'll be fine. We just need to get the keys. Someone get the keys. Someone's going to get the keys Quick, now. we need to get the keys. As soon as they'd walked down the stairs, Paul gave everyone left in the room the signal to get out. And whilst the ladies were busy talking to the reception staff, the whole troop of hustlers left the hotel by the fire escape. That was nerve-wracking, and it was it was scary how easily it can be done. <laughs> this isn't going to be a new career path for me, no. Uh, I, I would just feel too guilty. My conscience wouldn't allow me. Once was enough. I'm glad I've done the hustle, but no more. In this scan, the marks are put in a very stressful situation. They think Alex is having a heart attack. So the last thing on their mind is the cash in his pocket or the watches chained to his wrist. You know, this was a very elaborate scam. But the underlying message here is that you should never buy high value goods like jewelry or watches or electrical equipment from somebody you don't know and certainly never part with cash in those circumstances. It sounds too good to be true, it isn't true. Today's celebrity guest hustler is an award-winning radio and TV presenter and keen poker player. Colin Murray. No idea what's coming my way, but I know it's going to be deliciously deceptive, a license to cheat. I don't think there's anyone who's ever been born in Ireland that didn't have a little modicum of hustle in them. Colin's full of confidence, but he hasn't been briefed on the scam yet. All he's been told is to wait on a park bench and await further instructions. Here comes a young lady to fill him in. Hello. Hello. Hi. Colin. I'm yes. Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Nice to meet you. Excited? Good. Very. Nervous? I'd say buzzing. Excellent. How is your poker face? Oh, brilliant. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. You're going to be the um, journalist of a poker magazine. OK. And your job today is to rope in Mark and persuade them to join you in a poker game. This game is theirs and to really dig deep in their pockets and play as much as they can. You up for it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You ready? Come on yeah. then. Colin's a keen poker player and will be right in his element. But he's never played a card game like the one he will today in The Cross. Alex has arranged to meet some poker players at a trendy bar, inviting them to play in a private game he's organised for later this evening. Paul is playing the role of another player invited to the game and takes a seat inside whilst Alex keeps an eye out for the mark. And here he is, right on time. Hello, how you doing? You are right. One of the guys is here. Alex brings the mark and his mate in to meet Paul, then leaves them alone to get to know each other. How are you, Nick? Sorting stuff down to the table and everything. We should be ready to go soon. Uh, no worries. Oh, OK. okay. Yeah. <sighs> Where'd you boys play? In the Vic, yeah? Yeah, that's why you play it. Yeah. I've been there in ages. You into poker? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know the poker magazine guy's coming tonight, you know about this guy? This guy coming from a new, uh, a new poker magazine who's doing an article on, I guess, private games, stuff like that. It's a new magazine, it's called Poker Something, I can't remember what. I mean, it's brand new, literally brand new. 
Paul is being a little vague, almost as if he's making it up on the spot. So when you play, do you play any side games or any side bets or anything like that when you're... Do you... Right. Would you play Kaluki or backgammon or anything like that? I just love games. Really? Especially when they're, they're probably for games. That's music to Paul's ears. This guy that's coming in, we're actually going to do an article about that kind of thing, about games you can win. I'm going to show him Nim before we play tonight. You ever heard of Nim? You do it with straws, you can do it with matchsticks. It doesn't matter, but you can only take one, two or three. And whoever's left with the last one is the loser. <laughs> For the first part of the scam, Paul needs to persuade the mark to do him a favour. He wants to play a trick on the poker journalist that's about to arrive by challenging him to a game he's guaranteed to lose. The thing is that if you know the secret, you can always win. If I have him bet with you, would you bet against him? What, knowing that? Knowing that I'm going to win. So in other words, I'm playing for you. If you're guaranteeing it, yeah. All right. I need you to sneak a bottle cap onto the table when he's not looking. You'll get the idea. When he comes in, it's just easier if someone else does it. The mark agrees to help Paul play a trick on the journalist. And here he is. It's Colin. You Rob? I'm Rob. Oh, sorry. Nice to see you. Colin? Yeah. Nick, how you doing? Alex, who's posing as a member of staff for the bar, brings a box full of bottle caps for their game of Nim. That's fine, whatever. Yeah. I brought this thing to show you. All you have to do is take one, two or three caps. Whoever ends up with the last cap is the loser. All right? So here's the idea. I'll play against you, but uh, you can bet against one of these guys. I'll bet with you. All right. OK. It's a simple game. Each player takes a turn removing one, two, or three caps. The player to take the last cap <laughs> loses. And sure enough, Paul wins. I believe that's yours. OK. So that means you owe him a turn. Right, OK. The exact number of caps mean Paul will always be able to leave one behind if Colin goes first. You go first. I go first. Aye, darling. Aye. Aye. But this time, Paul goes first. Now he'll lose unless the mark adds that extra bottle top. Right. And I can take from any picture jacket up, though. Colin pretends to be distracted, giving the mark the perfect opportunity. I'll take from over here. Okay. First one. <laughs> and Colin loses again. <laughs> Paul comes clean about the little scam. When you were looking away... Oh, you dirty dog. He snuck in an extra <laughs> one. Right? When he puts an extra one in, I just take that one away. Brilliant. So you're still going first. That's brilliant. This whole scenario has been carefully crafted to suck the mark in. He's demonstrated he's willing to play a prank by cheating. And he's been rewarded by making money on the bets. Colin's now going to ask him to cheat See? in a slightly bigger way. This is, this is an interesting one because the article after the game is meant to be written from the point of view of how the game could have been cheated. Cheated? Yeah, we're doing a whole issue on like what you need to watch out for when you're playing. I'm cheating it as in you've got cards up your sleeve, like. Yeah, stuff like that, you know, I mean, cheating, you know, dealing off the bottom. Still happens, uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Okay, I have, a, I have a proposition for you, right? Let's cheat the game properly and I'll cover the boys who lose. So, to, right, if I could actually interview people who were in on cheating the people out of money, but I guarantee the people who lose money, I give them all their money back tomorrow, and you two keep what you win. I just think that's, yeah, that's you know, awesome I mean, to be involved in, and you can be talking about being in on it. As long as they get their money back. No, what, not, what do you mean to get their money back? They get the star in the new magazine. <laughs> it's perfect. So, the game will be rigged in the mark's favour for the article. He can keep the winnings and Colin will reimburse the losers. Who's going to win? One, two, three, four or five? Paul demonstrates how he can control the cards whenever it's his deal. That's hand three, right? Yeah. OK. Holy <laughs> should usually win. It's one of those things that looks easy, and if I did them, I hit you, in the, hit you in the face with the cards when I tried it. Practice. Yeah. Must have some practice. It's easy to give you the ace if it never moves from the top. Yeah, look. It's easy to just keep dealing. 
go. But will the mark go for it? Look, I'll give it a go. The thing is, I'm only cheating when I'm dealing. Okay, I'm not going to cheat on anyone else's deal. That's important. Yeah. The hustlers lead the mark downstairs to a private room for the game. This guy is already an experienced poker player, and with Paul's card manipulation guaranteeing him good hands, he's in for a great game. What could possibly go wrong? I can't be that unlucky. I'll wait for you. No way! Dude. When hustlers go out, they don't bring money. They bring prop bets. The proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. OK, now I've got a bet for you guys, OK? I'm going to use uh, a few things, OK? I'm going to use this shot glass, this peanut, so I'm going to put in the shot glass, and a 10 pence piece, OK? This is the bet. You've got to get the peanut on top of the 10 pence piece, but you're not allowed to touch the 10 pence piece or the peanut. You can touch the shot glass, you can move that around, you can do whatever you want with it, but you can't turn it over, and both the 10p and the peanut has to stay in the shot glass. That's Rachel, you go first. Oh, that was very good. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> You did have me worried a little bit. I don't want to sound cheap, like I wouldn't buy you drinks, but you know. Okay, do you have a go? Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's, that is a good idea, but I did say you can't turn it over. Okay. No? All right, do so you give up? Shall I show you? Yeah. For a round of drinks. To me, okay. if I can get the peanut on top of the 10 pence piece without touching the 10 pence or the peanut. Okay. I am going to use my straw. <laughs> Ready? OK. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it does work! Easy when you know how. Alex blows down into the shot glass. This flips the coin over and makes the peanut jump on top. Job done. I'll have a uh, gin and tonic, please. <laughs> a CD of call centre sound effects and a cold call to someone who's about to receive the offer of a lifetime. Your name's been selected by our system to take part in a new feature we're running. Giving ordinary people a chance to try out all of our latest TVs, Blu-rays, uh, iPads, PCs, any sort of technology that you can imagine. If you're willing to take part, um, we can deliver a brand new state-of-the-art 3D television to your home, um, install it for you. And uh, then you can keep it if you want to. If you don't like the TV, then we'll return it and reinstall uh, your old one. So is this something that you'd be interested in doing? Fabulous. A new TV for free? It's an offer too good to refuse. We will probably be able to deliver um, the TV to you um, sometime after 11.30. Is that okay with you? Lovely, thank you. You're welcome. Be with you soon. Bye. Buckle up. This is old for new. Later that morning, a delivery van turns up. It's got lots of authentic looking branding, so it must be genuine. The mark is outside and gets a good look at the van and the delivery men. How are you, mate? You're right. Hi. How did you hear about me? Did my wife fill in something or? Uh, you know, we just get sent to where we get sent to. Because I'm the one you see my telly and ripping me off. No. <laughs> Some people are just too suspicious. You're going to get a nice brand new one. Uh, 3D. It's uh, 3D, state of the art. And also, if you don't like it, you get your old telly back and you've had a nice new telly to play with. So very good TVs. Can we have a look at your one? Yeah. Yep, thank you. The workmen go inside to look at the Mark's existing TV. It'll be swapped for the new one. They also place some hidden cameras to capture the action. Just on a bracket here. Okay. All right. Uh, let's just, just grab the other one. 
Having scoped out the living room, Alex and Jazz head outside to the van to bring in their delivery. Here it is, a state-of-the-art 3D high-definition TV. I wouldn't mind having a watch one of these. Before the new one can go up, the existing TV comes down. Though it doesn't do 3D, it's still an expensive high-end television. Take care, what? Oh, oh yeah, this, we'll is my, this is my baby. Yeah, is that, is that your baby? <laughs> the Marks TV goes in the back of the van. Oh, get the dust through, Jane, get the dust through. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Jazz goes back inside to ask the Mark how he'd like the new one to be installed. Um, do you get glasses with it? Do you have to have glasses? Yeah, 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 you right. do. Glasses are in there and stuff. Right. Would you like it put up on the same bracket? bracket? Yeah, that's can. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, we'll, okay, the best thing is probably take it off of the, your telly and put it and just... Yeah, and hook it back onto that yeah. one. Is it possible just to move, to, like, to move all this stuff out yeah. the way so we don't yeah. kick yeah. anything? Yeah. All right. That should keep the Mark busy for a minute. Sense. I'll move my very sharp sword that I can use. <laughs> I don't know. Jazz isn't hanging about. He heads straight into the driver's cab, where Alex and Jess are already waiting with the engine running. And before the Mark has a chance to react, Alex hits the accelerator, and they're off. <laughs> Taking with them the Mark's pride and joy. But this guy doesn't take it lying down. He's straight into his car to give chase. Fortunately, his samurai sword is still in the house and the hustlers have too much of a head start. When the Mark returns empty-handed, he isn't happy. Still, at least he's got a brand new TV boxed up in the house, doesn't he? Books. Excellent, just full of stupid books. What a great con. What a great con. I'd fell hook, line and sinker. Something that's free, it's not a good offer. You know what I mean? There's something, there's something there. If you're ever unsure about a company that you're dealing with, then look them up. Look on the internet, make some phone calls. If they don't check out, then keep them out of your home. Earlier today, Colin Murray posed as a magazine journalist and asked this poker player to help him write an article about cheating at cards. Look, well, I'll give it a go. The thing is, I'm only cheating when I'm dealing. Okay, I'm not going to cheat on anyone else's deal. They've do? agreed that whenever Paul's dealing, he'll make sure the mark gets a winning hand. It's so long as they get their money back. No, what, so, not, what do you mean to get their money back? They get the star in the new magazine. He can keep any money he wins, and Colin will reimburse any other players that lose during Paul's deal. In The Cross Part 2. Alex has arranged a private room in the basement for the game. He's even got a barmaid on standby to serve the drinks. Susie will be serving some drinks. I've done it rough. It's actually Jess. The Mark meets the other players, whose money, with a little help from Paul, he plans to win. First, the players buy into the game. The mark gets out a thousand pounds in cash. How much you got there? Yeah. Like, like, thousand. The cards are in the air and the game begins. Each player in turn acts as the dealer, shuffling the cards, handing the deck to his neighbor to cut, then dealing out the hands. Oh yeah. Do that all night. Yeah. Keep showing. The mark is playing the game as he normally would but he's really waiting for Paul's turn to deal. Jack five, but every time I get it, I always go... Finally, it's time. Paul carefully manipulates the cards during a shuffle, arranging them so that the mark will get a very strong hand. But it'll only work if Colin does his job properly. He has to cut the deck at exactly the same point Paul cut it. That way, they'll be back in the order Paul intended them to be in. It's good, it's perfect. Like 
Colin had just minutes to practice this move before the scan began. Good. That's it. Oh. This is Colin's big moment. Just one card out either way, and Paul will deal the wrong hand to the mark. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right, the mark is unaware of the move, but knows things are going to plan when he sees the hand Paul's dealt him. A pair of kings. His job now is to get as many chips into the pot as possible and draw in his opponents with weaker cards. Let's give the blind some value. But everyone else folds. The mark only wins three pounds. Not exactly what he had in mind. The game continues, and it's another 20 minutes before it's Paul's turn to deal again. Once more, Paul shuffles, and Colin makes the rigged cut. This time, Paul deals the mark, ace king, another huge poker hand. But once again, everyone folds. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? This cheating thing is not as easy as it seems, and the mark is getting very frustrated. Do you have a little three-minute break? Is everyone all right? We'll have no, a, it's fine. Let's we'll have, have a break. Yeah. Get uh, the game breaks for a few minutes, and the cheaters confer. Um, it's all well and good cheating, but no one's playing. Paul suggests a new tactic. That's a grand of my money. You put in whatever you've got. Put in whatever you've got. Buying more chips, so he's covered. Mm. And I'm going to hit him with a hand as well. It's called a double duke. He'll not only give the mark a big hand, he'll make sure someone else at the table also has a big hand. And the mark should then bet as much money on that one hand as he possibly can. Right, so so before we play, buy in for more chips. All right. Right, okay. Paul gives him an additional thousand, and the mark borrows 500 pounds from his mate to make sure he wins as much as possible. Yeah. Anybody wanting to top up or anything like that? Yeah, I'll see by it. How much? 1500. Another 15? Yeah. yeah. The mark buys in for the extra money. Is this someone's coat? Oh, that's mine. Sorry, oh, I left it upstairs. It's all right. Someone looks like this. Oh, what was our race? Did you get much out of it? Excuse me, look. Did I bring you down your drink? You did, yes. Sorry. Sorry, you didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> The game restarts, and it's the Mark's deal. As luck would have it, he's dealt himself two aces. The best starting hand in poker. And that was without Paul's help. All right. Family pot, love it. This time, he's getting some action from the other players. Yeah. Do that all night. Yeah. Keep showing. The first shared cards come down in the middle of the table. Yeah, that's good for some, man. There are the other two aces. The mark is now sitting with an almost unbeatable hand of four of a kind, and around two and a half thousand pounds to play with. Well, friendly, I'll just raise it. Fifty's the bet. Wow, really? Even though this isn't one of Paul's rigged hands, he's firing out the bets. Hundred. Re re raise. One hundred's the bet. He can't believe his luck. Other players are also putting their chips in the middle. Opportunities like this don't come along very often. Okay, that was 50. The call was 50. The full bet is 200. It's another call. 300 to bet, gentlemen. No chance. The final card goes down. The mark has one of the strongest possible hands in poker, and only one other hand can beat him. But it's so unlikely he has no choice but to get all his chips in. I can't do that. So I'll wait all in. You're all in, right? I'm all in. Yeah. Paul and Colin look a little worried. This isn't the plan they agreed. The mark was only meant to bet big on Paul's deal, and he's betting not just with his money, but theirs too. Wow. What? Really? What's going on? I've never seen anything like this. All right. Holy moly. What's that? There's now more than eight thousand pounds on the table. The cards. A turned over. He had the king. Oh, he had the flush. I've got the jacks. What have you got? Sucked out on me. The mark 
turns over his aces. Wow. Oh, oh, what have you got? Oh, you what have you got? Sucked out on me. And then he sees the one hand he was dreading. Another player turns over. A straight flush. No way. Okay. No. He's got, He's got straight. straight flush. Why? He wins it. It's a disaster. Not only has he lost his money, he's also managed to lose the money Paul gave him as well. That's an expensive hand. Wow, what a coup. See that one coming, boys. Uh, I'm going, guys. Thanks. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you. The game breaks. Well done. Dude. That's sick. Well done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The mark leaves with empty pockets, and he owes Paul another thousand pounds. Paul is left in silence. It's unbelievable. Colin tries to work out what just happened. He assumed he was going to take the mark's money, not some random stranger. I've never, ever seen that online. What the hell just happened? I that cannot guy... happen. I'm sorry, it can't happen. I thought the guy was waiting on your queue. All right, here's the thing. In a normal game in someone's house, the odds of that are like six million to one or something like that. The odds of that happening with you two shysters at the table <laughs> are more like evens. What are you trying to say, Colin? Sam? And it was, it was brilliant. There he is. There's the boy. <laughs> sure enough, here's the winning player. Not some random stranger, but working for the hustlers all along. It was just beautiful. It was beautiful. And I'm never playing poker again with people I don't know. So how did the Mark lose all his money on his own deal? That's not bad. Thank you, mate. During the game, Jess arranged a duplicate deck of cards into a pre-arranged order. She then slipped it into Alex's coat pocket. She hung the jacket over the back of Alex's chair whilst the game was in mid-flow. <laughs> and when the Mark had the maximum amount of chips in front of him, she waited until he'd shuffled the cards, then asked him about his drinks order. Excuse me, love, did I bring you down your drink? The tiny moment of distraction was all Alex needed to switch the shuffled deck for the rigged one. Sorry, sorry, you didn't mean to interrupt. Anytime you like. The Mark then passed out the cards, not knowing he was dealing himself a hand that no poker player would be able to pass. From this point on, he was guaranteed to lose every penny in his pocket. He's got straight flush. No way. The hand, there were so many pairs in the hand. Everyone had a full house. I had quad aces and, and he got a straight flush, so I lost about. Two and a half grand, yeah. adding it all up. That's just the way it goes sometimes. It's, it's, luck comes in many guises, as they say, so. And it weren't my lucky night, so. It was wrong, but I can't help but admire the workmanship and the craftsmanship and the genius of what they pulled off at that table. I would never do it, morally wrong, in all honesty. Like, I feel it is a moral game. He would have actually rang Rob tomorrow and giving them another thousand pounds and top of the skin up. Unbelievable. It's an eye opener. 20 quid's my max from here on in. Sitting at a poker table with a couple of hustlers is a very bad place to find yourself. If they're touching the cards, it means someone is going to be losing all of their money. And it's almost certainly going to be you. Poker's an increasingly popular game. Thousands of people enjoy playing. But if you want to protect yourself, make sure that you play with people you know or you play in a properly regulated club.